Uh, welcome everyone to the Embedded Linux Ecosystem BOF, uh, Birds of a Feather session. Um, and I hope that this is an interactive session. I don't want to be saying all of my ideas. The idea is to kind of have a discussion. Uh, there are uh, plenty of seats here on the front row. Oh, good. There you go. Um, and uh, it's, good to, it's good to be here uh, and uh, be in Europe. And it's good to see all your bright, shiny faces. I wish I could see your smiles, uh, but I can't do that. Um, so uh, I, I guess I'll just dive right into it. Um, I always put the abstract uh, at the front just because these slides go up on the eLinux wiki and so then people can see what the talk is supposed to be about uh, by looking at the first slide. I'm just going to talk, give a really brief status, uh, what I think the status is of a couple of areas uh, in embedded Linux um, and then uh, discuss overview of issues and then have an open discussion. And I hope that uh, you will feel free to complain. Or, uh, or, or not complain, or you know, praise things that you think are going well. Um, and uh, you'll kind of see as we go along here. So the status. So in uh, North America version of this conference, the Embedded Linux conference in North America, I gave my kind of traditional status of Embedded Linux talk. And um, I'm not going to repeat that whole thing here. It's way too long. It was an hour and a half that I squeezed into 40 minutes. Uh, and so, uh, but the presentation is online on the eLinux wiki. Uh, I think there were problems with the video, so I think there might be some minutes missing at the front, but uh, you get the general idea. But in that talk, I did some scorecards. So now, this is, this is an exercise. I, you probably didn't realize you were getting kind of homework <laughs> when you came to this session. Uh, but this is an exercise. I'm going to present my scorecards, and I want you to think in your mind, do I agree or disagree with the scores that, that Tim gave to, to these areas of embedded Linux? And if you disagree, and it's particularly if you disagree and you think we're on the negative side, if you think I'm, I'm being generous in my assessment, then let's talk about that, right? So, um, so technology scorecard. This is, <laughs> yes, I can tell from the laughter that, uh, so system size, we're done. There's no issues on system size. Boot time, power management, real time is done. Uh, security, still in progress. Uh, audio video graphics is in progress. OK, so I will admit that this, this is based on kernel contributions in the last few years, which, is me, which means, I'm going to interpret this, that um, based on the amount of people contributing in these areas, I think we're done, right? Because if there's no more contributions, we must be done. Uh, <laughs> This is what I really think. Uh, no, system size, we're not done. Boot time, we're really not done. Uh, power management, I don't know. I'm OK, Kevin's shaking his head. That's a good indication that we're not done. Real time, security is in progress. Uh, so one of the things I realized when I prepared this talk in June is that a lot of these issues are holistic, which means that um, in order to tackle system size, you have to attack the whole kernel simultaneously. Same thing with real time, same thing with power management. You can't, just, you can't just go into a driver and fix one driver, right? You have to attack the whole thing. Um, and so they're hard problems. These are hard problems to solve. Um, so, okay, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to keep going through some more scorecards. Uh, this is my development scorecard, okay? So build system distros. I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, they're pretty. They're pretty powerful. They do a lot of stuff. Documentation. I don't know. Okay. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> this is where I'll inject my own opinion. I think we could do a lot better on documentation. Um, I. You know. And John Corbett is in charge of documentation in the kernel. That's the one I kind of pay attention to. It. It seems like it could be better. And that's not a reflection on John. It's just a reflection on. Um, I don't know. When I first started doing kernel work. It was seriously, like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, um, I found the documentation not to be that great, and I don't think it's improved that much. Uh, so anyway, training consulting, I think there's a lot of companies doing this stuff. Tool chains, I think we're in good shape. Debugging capabilities, uh, languages, test systems, there's a lot of work going on right now. It's kind of in progress. Hardware support will always be the bane of Linux, the upstreaming stuff. 
Um, but I'm not trying to talk you out of your opinion, so keep, keep mental notes for our discussion section. OK, then the market scorecard. So drones, I think we're doing pretty good in drones, robots, cars, space systems. Actually, someone, someone disagreed with me and said we're actually, we're actually really good in space systems. So but people are shaking their heads. Uh, routers, good. Consumer electronics, OK. Here where I'll, I will say, you know, modulo the other problems that we have in some of those other scorecard areas. We're totally dominating in consumer electronics, right? So I don't know of a television set that's being manufactured that doesn't have Linux in it. Uh, phones were at 85% market share, um, and you know DVRs and cameras and stuff. It's Linux is really dominant in a lot of places, and this is that's just consumer. That you could go on and on and on. There's lots of different markets. Um, okay, so I'm just going to rattle off some of the areas that I think that we have issues in. Um, uh, but first, I want to make a couple of observations. Uh, one is the paradox of, Im of embedded open source, right? So open source effects come because we can collaborate and we can share. Um, but embedded means we're doing custom work, <laughs> right? So we're customizing what we're doing. So there's a paradox there. Everyone is doing something unique. And usually, you're ripping stuff out, right, to hit your size goal or your performance goals. And you're customizing it because your stack is, is a, a more vertical stack, right? You're not doing a general purpose operating system, so you don't have to have every library under the sun. Um, and so, so you're, and, and in fact, I don't know, there's a gazillion kernel config options, right? And I bet if I was to look at you know, everyone's product in here, I'd see a different kernel configuration. Uh, or maybe, maybe, there's some, maybe there's some common ones. Uh, but embedded, in embedded, we tend to tune things and tweak things more. I'll make that assertion. I'm sure the enterprise guys are, and the cloud guys would disagree with me, but that's OK. Um, so we have a big ecosystem. I don't know if you can read this. The, the slides are really small. But I, I mean, we have tons of people who should be in our ecosystem. right? We have the, SO, the silicon vendors, uh, the associations related to that, uh, uh, the people, the design House, I'm not sure what you call ARM. They don't fab stuff, but, they, but they're the designers of the, of the silicon. Um, you have the hardware vendors. OK, so there are people who make peripherals that go into embedded, as, long, as well as the IP block vendors, right? the people who sell IP to the semiconductor vendors. Uh, there's embedded Linux vendors, or embedded Linux consultancy, or uh, there's a bunch I listed on here. Oh, did, I, did you see my disclaimer? I put a disclaimer on one of the slides early saying, I really apologize if I missed your company or your market segment or, or your anything. So I, you know, there's way too much, way too many of us uh, uh, to put everybody down. But then there's like board vendors, right? There's a little bunch of people that make embedded boards, maker boards, um, and actually production-ready boards. There's product manufacturers, so that's the category I'm in. I, I'm in at Sony, so we do consumer electronics. Um, but then there's a whole bunch of products, right, that get manufactured both at scale and for small units, right? Uh, so there's automotive, robotics, routers, many, many others. There's a very long tail, tractors, rockets, uh, sense, underwater sensors, uh, you name it. There's embedded Linux in everything. Um, but then, okay, then we got industrial users. We've got makers and hobbyists. Uh, and then we have the build systems and the distributions. Um, and uh, then even if they're not involved in embedded, upstream developers are also kind of part of this community, right? So there are people who come to Embedded Linux Conference who are not embedded developers, but they come because they're part of the Linux community or part of a distribution community. Um, and so, so here's my question. Uh, one of the issues that I see is, you know, we've got 600 people here, which is really good, uh, but there's between it, estimates vary, but between 250,000 and a million embedded Linux developers in the world. Okay, so where are they? Why aren't we as big as KubeCon, which gets like 5,000 people? Um, 14. 14. KubeCon gets 14,000. Holy smokes! Okay, <laughs> that's. I'm not sure I want to go to a conference with 14,000, but anyway. Uh, so here's some of the issues that I see. Um, I see upstreaming. Uh, 
is, has, it, that's like the problem that will be with us always, but you know, uh, testing, uh, some of the resources that we have, information availability, uh, connecting with each other, and ecosystem growth. So I'm gonna do this quickly, because I wanted to make sure that I have enough time for a discussion. Um, so, how many lines, upstreaming, how many lines of code do you have in your product uh, that are out of tree? Uh, and I will take a, a quick survey. Anybody, uh, uh, should we go do it lines of code? I'm not sure I can count lines of code. I know how many patches that we have out of tree, uh, that Sony has out of tree, and it's about 2,000, right? Uh, so anybody, anybody believe they have, uh, who's in the thousands range? Thousands of patches out of tree, okay? Who's in the, who's in the hundreds range, okay? A couple people. Who's, who's, in the, who's in the tens of thousands of patches out of tree? Okay, so I used to work for Sony Mobile, and, uh, and I don't wanna pick on any one company, uh, but this was, this was uh, I don't know, eight years ago or something. Uh, we had 2.5 million lines out of tree, and I won't say what, what the vendor was, but, but, <laughs> what? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, okay, so stuff out of tree is a problem, and there's a couple of reasons for that, all right? Um, anyway, I'm not gonna go into all the reasons because I'll run out of time, but, so, all of that code that's out of tree, right, is technical debt, that you, as, if you're, if you're downstream from that, like if your semiconductor vendor has stuff out of tree, then that's stuff that you have to maintain, you have to bug fix, um, and, and that means, likely, that you can't get on the top of tree kernel, which means that there are testing resources not available to you, there's support resource, there's uh, the kind of community effect talking to upstream developers. Uh, it's not that they're rude, but upstream developers are mo more, just are more focused on the current kernels, right? So if you're using an LTS kernel from you know, 10 years ago or five years ago, then you're just not gonna get the same kind of community interactions. Um, so, uh, who's doing a good job though? So I apologize, I didn't go into all the different uh, uh, ecosystem member categories. I, I picked the category of uh, embedded Linux consultant companies or something. And these are actually pretty good numbers, I think. For, given the number of employees that these companies have, uh, compared to you know, you know, Intel and Google and Red Hat, they, they do a lot of contributions. But, but you know, these companies uh, do a really good job of contributing. Um, the question is, where, where is, uh, is your supplier on here? These are not really suppliers. These are, usually these are um, contractors, right, for, for some of the big companies. Uh, but they're doing good, they're doing good work. Um, I bet you didn't know I, I measured this every kernel release. <laughs> so I do take a look at this stuff. And this is just because when I'm preparing my embedded Linux status report, uh, I like to see what's going on. So I go check what the companies have been working on. Um, okay, so what problems do we share that we're working on in isolation? So I, I know for a fact that if I was to do a, a comprehensive poll of the whole room, which I don't have time for, now, but if I was to do a comprehensive poll, I'd find out that some of you are doing the same thing as someone in another part of the room, right? The exact same, not exact same thing, but similar, similar work, right? You're, you're fixing up a Wi-Fi driver or you're, uh, you're wrestling with some aspect of your distribution. Um, and so where do the problems lie? Again, I'm asking you to take mental notes because I'm gonna slow down uh, in just a few minutes here. And, and we'll start having the discussion. So is, are there problems in the kernel? And just think about where you're spending your engineering resources. Are you working on the kernel? Are you working on the distros? Are you working on testing? Are you managing your compliance? Uh, are you working on community infrastructure? Uh, or do we have problems there? So where is it that we can combine and share efforts? Um, do we have a problem with increasing our community or our ecosystem? Uh, are there any issues with us bringing more people into our community? Uh, so do, are there obstacles? We know that lots of embedded developers exist, right? Uh, but they don't show up upstream or at our events. Um, and what, what things can we do to make sure that new developers feel welcome, right? That we can, um, 
increase? And are there obstacles to, for people to participate? Um, so what can we do to make it so that developing, distributing, oops, and maintaining an embedded Linux product is as easy as possible? So the purpose of this BOF is really to make my life easier. <laughs> But, but it's to make all of our lives easier, right? Through collaboration. That's the point of open source. Um, so <clears throat> another question that I want to raise is, <clears throat> excuse me, what resources could we utilize more effectively to build our ecosystem? And uh, there's several different categories. Uh, most of these are kind of communication categories. Uh, we have the eLinux wiki, mailing list, conferences. I'm going to go through them uh, real quickly. Uh, again, we will stop, I'll slow down and we'll stop and we'll uh, go back to areas that people want to comment on. Uh, in terms of the eLinux Wiki, uh, who here has heard of the eLinux Wiki? Okay, good. Uh, how, many, how many use it? How many have gone to the eLinux Wiki, say, in the last six months to look up something? Oh, that's good. Okay, that's, uh, that was, the answer is about, I don't know, 50%. Um, this is hosted by Oregon State University, uh, Open Source Lab. The content, uh, the, the, what's good on the content, it does have the repository of slides and videos from Embedded Linux Conference and from a few other conferences. Um, but some areas are pretty stale, uh, used to be kind of more actively maintained. Um, it would be good if it, was, if it was updated. The issue, kind of an immediate issue, is that the administrator is likely to lose funding uh, in the next year. So there actually is a paid administrator administrator for this. Um, I won't go into all the details, but um, the main job of the administrator is to do the MediaWiki upgrades because it's a, it's a MediaWiki-based site uh, and do spam control. And so he approves the, in order to control spam, uh, he approves the uh, user accounts. It's not a taxing thing. Um, and he also rolls back any spam. So you have to have a user account to contribute. And uh, so uh, that helps with the spam a lot. Um, so can we raise funds for an administrator? If there were ads on eLinux Wiki, would people, would, would that offend people? Uh, could we, do we have enough interest for the, to the, for the administration to be voluntary? Those are open questions. Um, in terms of content, there is lots of stale content. So uh, here's, another, here's another poll. Uh, who here has made a contribution to the eLinux Wiki in the last six months? Oh, all right. Oh, okay. You guys are awesome. I, I should like buy you a drink or something tonight. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. I think if you if you put slides on there, we'll count it. Oh, actually, well, I, I could extend that. If if Bill Trainer put your slides on there, I'll count it too. That would be like all our speakers and stuff. But. Um, uh, so, uh, did you know that we made uh, actually a concerted effort a couple of years ago to do a topical guide to all the slide presentations? So that if you're looking like for device tree stuff or boot up time stuff, you can find all the presentations in one place. Um, but we did this big push two years ago and then, and then we haven't, <laughs> well, COVID hit and COVID is a great excuse for a lot of lackadaisical attention to things. Um, but uh, so we need to refresh that. Um, so uh, I'll ask this at the end. I haven't, I haven't made you answer except in a couple of places, but are there any volunteers to help clean up the site? Uh, that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> um, in terms of mailing list, okay, so we have there, did you know that there is an actual kernel.org mailing list for embedded Linux? Okay, Linux embedded. It exists, but it's very, very seldom used. And, and I can think of some reasons why that's the case. Um, it's specific to the kernel. We don't want to turn it into a support list. That's not the purpose of it. Um, but, and for instance, this type of discussion, just an overall ecosystem discussion, really wouldn't be appropriate on that list, right? Because this is a more general type of discussion. Um, but where could we have this discussion? The CE Linux forum created something called CE Linux dev. Uh, that exists also, uh, but is very, very seldom used. Um, and this was just intended to discuss consumer electronics Linux development. So that's an even more kind of specialized topic. So one question, should we get a more general purpose mailing list? Would a mailing list help to build our community better? 
Okay, so I see I, I see heads shaking no. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so the, que the statement is, what about forums? Uh, and the assertion is that's possibly a dirty word. Um, I don't know. I don't tend to go into forums. I would rather have stuff just delivered to me. It's easier for me to like, discard the stuff I'm not interested in than to actively go out to a website. Uh, I don't know how other people are. If there was a forum, I, I could see myself getting on it. I don't know. It's it's hard to say though. You know, it's like a push model versus a pull model. Um, but it, but it is would it be good to have multiple communication channels that suited different different tastes? The problem is you don't want to fragment the communication channels, right? Uh, so okay, um, I'm going to keep going until oh until 11:20 a minute ago. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so conferences, uh, and I have something very specific to ask here because we're actually making some decisions at this event uh, concerning uh, the future of Embedded Linux Conference. So we have general events uh, like Embedded Linux Conference, and we have specialized ones like Yakio Dev Daves, Auto Automotive Linux Summit, Zephyr, uh, and, uh, and then there are regional events. I call FOSDEM regional. I don't know if uh, that's offensive to the FOSDEM people. Maybe they, th maybe they think it's a worldwide event. Uh, but we have Japan Jamborees. Um, so on ELC, very specific question. Um, should we split from Open Source Summit? We used to be a standalone event, and then we kind of folded under the umbrella uh, for a lot of different reasons. I don't have time to go into. Uh, but you know, so now we're one of, one of the conferences that's under this kind of big umbrella conference with a lot of unrelated events. Um, and some of them, like LinuxCon or Emerging OS or Embedded IoT, some of those are kind of related, you might be interested in, but some of them you might not be that interested in. Uh, in particular, we have an issue with keynotes. Uh, keynotes are... They're, sometimes they're enlightening and they're interesting, and sometimes they're just cloud people talking about stuff. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, okay. So tomorrow you'll be happy to know there's a couple of sessions you can go to at ELC that are running concurrent with the, with the keynotes. Um, but uh, so we have an opportunity possibly to change things. Uh, so should we go? It's likely what we're talking about is the possibility of having an umbrella event, um, but focus more focused on embedded. So it'd just be some of those things that were on that list, like Zephyr and Yocto, might be folded under an embedded event. Those seem heavily related. Uh, we might pull in other things that kind of are quasi embedded, like LF Energy, or uh, there was one other one. Uh, civil what? Civil oh, yeah, civil infrastructure for sure. Um, so uh, does that sound appealing? Uh, OK, that's good. Yes, no? Oh, OK. Should I, should I it, would it be worthwhile sending out a survey specifically on this? OK. Right. So. Um, OK, so I didn't get to the frequency yet. But so the frequency, right now we're doing twice per year. We're, thought, we're thinking about maybe going once per year. Yeah. I also like the option to have the ELC be slot parallel to the keynote. OK, so that's a vote in favor of ELC uh, slots parallel to the keynotes. OK, that's good. I, I've heard feedback from a lot of people that that's appreciated. So there's something for the embedded people to do. Well, uh, um, so the other thing, though, so the observation from uh, Behan, wa Behan was that um, if we went to once a year, that doesn't mean there's only one event per year that has embedded content because there's plumbers. And we might, we will likely position ourselves anti-podal, I don't know if I use that right, uh, to plumbers. So plumbers is always in the fall. We would probably shoot for something in the spring. And so that if you want to go to two events a year, uh, or, or we're also talking about alternating so we're opposite hemisphere from them. So it would be 
Uh, if Plumbers is in Europe, we'll be in North America. If we're in Europe, they'll be in North America. Um, so something should be rotating through your neighborhood continentally <laughs> uh, every year. Um, and then content or format. And this is uh, right now. So Plumbers, I, I talked to Steve Rostet, who's, I, don't, I think he's the chair this year of the Plumbers. And uh, he said, Plumbers is really for stuff that's in progress, that has not been decided. It's for dis discussions about what to do next. Um, and that is a little bit different than what we have here. We have a little bit of that here, but a lot of our content is what's happened, especially what's happened recently, so we can get uh, you know, re uh, presentations on that on the wiki so that people can see. Um, but also for uh, new people, uh, there's lots of content about existing subsystems or existing systems uh, and things that people have tried uh, so that you can see what other, other embedded developers are using, what's working for them, best practices type thing. So do we want it more like plumbers, less like plumbers, a little mixture of both? Um, maybe I'll put this in my survey. I'm way over my time, so there are other resources that maybe we could use. Think about that. Now, discussion time. Only six minutes late. OK. Um, so and I want to set the stage a little bit. Uh, so I have a really old mantra uh, that I use, which is, if you are spending resources on something, and you know that someone else is spending resources on something, you really ought to get together with them, right? And it's like, that you, you, if you could collaborate, you know, you might not be able to, right? Because again, it's embedded. Everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Um, but you have a candidate for collaboration. So whatever it is, think about what your company is doing, where they're spending the resources, where are you personally spending your time in Linux development? Um, uh, and then, but also uh, go a little bit beyond that. What do you wish was happening uh, in, in the community? And maybe, you know, that, you have to be careful. This is one of those boomerang things, right? Where it's a boomerang idea where you say, oh gosh, I wish documentation was better. It's like, well, it's right there. <laughs> you can work on it. Uh, but maybe if as a community, you know, we can do, a, uh, instead of death by a thousand cuts, we can do life by a thousand cuts. You know, we do a bunch of small projects that uh, together don't cost us much individually, uh, but can have a big impact for our future. Right, so what, what are you not working on that you wish was better? Okay, and with that, I think, oh, that's, that's the end. Um, so I'm gonna open it up. Is there any particular topic that people wanna talk about of, of kind of the major issues? I talked about resources. Yes, Wolfram. Okay, so let me let me stop. Okay, yes, good. Um, let me stop. I'm supposed to repeat stuff, and I'll never remember all of it. So just a sec. Let me re uh, for the microphone and for for people virtual. Um, there's an issue, particularly in the Linux kernel, with maintainer gap. Right? There's not enough maintainers, and uh, as we see more uh, contributions from embedded people, uh, we. Uh, my, my impression, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is that we don't see the same number of review, reviewers. We don't see the increase in reviewing and testing uh, that needs to go along with that. And so we're in danger of causing a burnout for our maintainers, uh, is my impression. Uh, a lot of people, I, I know some maintainers who have been doing it a long time, and I don't know how they keep it up. It's, it's a tough job. So yeah, more. Okay, so that's, that's good. Because, it, because I think uh, embedded companies should have an interest in, in also maintaining that. And the other thing is we as a community have to think how to educate people, blah, blah, blah. Okay, 
So the, the, the comment is it'd be good if besides the stats for contributions, we also had the stats for maintainers. Who, who's maintaining what? Uh, and luckily, we have the data on that because it's in the maintainers file. So we could extract that. I, one of the things, I, I, I was a little bit hesitant to put a table on here with some numbers because I don't want to... I don't want to turn it into a numbers game, right? And you know, different companies at different phases of their, uh, not their life, but of, of their development or their work are doing different things, right? So Consulco had a really low number. And I felt, and, and that's not because they haven't contributed a lot in the past. They just, I just happen to know they're working on AGL or stuff right now. And it's not in kernel. Uh, so you got to be really careful looking at the numbers and making any kind of assessment about you know the value of a company. But I do think recognizing the maintainers uh, and the contributions that people make is really good. And and I there are some uh, if you actually go in and look at the patches, there's you can kind of tell what the companies what their specialty is, right? So Colo Bora has been a, doing a ton of stuff with uh, the Panfoss driver. Um, and you know, there you can find examples. You kind of you kind of know who their customers are based on uh, <laughs> some of this stuff. But but no, and but I don't want to turn it into a numbers game. But I think you're right. Uh, so we need we need uh, more uh, other metrics that that are good. Uh, any other any other comments? Yeah. Right. So we have, well, we're doing okay with keeping things upgraded, right? But if you're just upgrading really aggressively, guess what? Things are going to break. And then you've got a growing list of bugs going to this person that does nothing, and it's out of time. Right. Okay. So let me. Right. So let me, let, me, uh, let me see if I can restate that. So in the Octo project, uh, the Dunfell release and Kirkstone, so those two uh, get, they see contributions on those uh, releases, uh, presumably because those are the ones that are being used and put into products, and, uh, but they don't see contributions at top of tree. And so a lot of stuff uh, as, as the top of tree uh, needs, a, you know, as they encounter issues top of tree, they're not getting fixed as fast as they'd like. Um, and so a lot of stuff is going to an unassigned. Um, that is the classic, I mean, I, you're, that is a classic problem, right? So in embedded, a lot of times we get stuck not at top of tree, right? Our product designs, we have two, three-year-old kernels, two, three-year-old distributions maybe. Uh, and so that's where we're spending a lot of our effort. Um, I don't have a good solution for that. Uh, well, I, I refer to that as version gap, and we've seen that throughout the industry for as long as I've been working in Linux. Uh, so I don't know if there's any ideas for curing that. Go ahead. I think it's honestly consumer versus um, contributor gap. That's literally what it is. It's right. Consumer mentality. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. There's a uh, the uh, comment was that it's a gap between consumer and contributor. So a lot of people are very comfortable being consumers, uh, not as comfortable contributing, and so. I've seen that a lot with um, embedded vendors with uh, SOCs and SOMs that they point to a, an LTS release and not to right. the main. Right. That's what they would recommend you start experimenting with. Then that's kind of given that you're not going to run on top of three. Right. Yeah, so the observation up here is that uh, SOC vendors and SOM vendors are often based on an LTS release, and so they're behind already. Um, and when you're starting to experiment, you're already behind. Yeah. You should really start experiments and do bring up on top of tree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the observation is you should bring, do bring up on top of tree. Um, let me let me go real quick to uh, well I don't know let me any other any other comments are there we've got about five minutes left are there any things that you see as particular obstacles uh, to people participating is it is it as wide open as it should be in terms of people participating? That's our, oh, comment back there. So uh, I uh, contribute to the uh, build group mailing list. Which, you know, mailing lists are obviously kind of the more traditional way of contributing to the contribution of open source projects. And uh, there's, there's definitely sort of some tribal knowledge in the fact that there's definitely been, you know, a bit of a learning curve, especially for me as part of the younger generation. Sort of figure out all the, the ins and outs 
OK, mm -hmm. let me stop you there, because I want to repeat. Um, so the observation is that for a new person, uh, particularly in an email setting, which email is a fairly popular way for uh, projects to conduct their business, uh, there's a lot of tribal knowledge, a lot of history, uh, and so it's harder to come up to speed. So go ahead. Did you have anything else to? That, that's okay. That's okay. Well, that's a good observation. So one of the purposes of the wiki was to create a place where you could have this persistent knowledge, right, that you could jot down. But the trick is getting people interested enough. I mean, kernel developers will ra rarely write a comment, <laughs> let alone documentation, let alone go to some website and, and put some notes down. Uh, so, I mean, about the best best thing that we've been able to do is capture a lot of the information that comes out at these events, right? So uh, you can get people to, to kind of coalesce their knowledge and give it in a presentation, and then we record that, and hopefully it's available for, for new people to look at. Uh, are, there any other, um, are there any other ideas for encouraging? Yeah. Okay, so there, the the question uh, the question is um, well, okay. The statement followed by a question. The statement that uh, uh, some of the reference boards that we have are a little bit old. Uh, they're supported by distros. Would it be possible to use uh, a reference platform where it would be easier to collaborate on things like boot time? And you know, if we're if we're all on different boards, right? Boot time and size in particular are very, very uh, dependent on what it is you're trying to do, you know, what your, what your vertical stack is of software, and also what your hardware is, right? Because you're just going to be tuning stuff like crazy. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I don't, uh, you know, if I'm working on a camera at Sony, uh, I don't know how much time I'm going to invest on uh, some other board to, to focus on the boot up time. Um, so that, that's a hard problem. Uh, you know, that, uh, the, the paradox of embedded is really kind of a tragedy, you know, that we're in so many different places. We have this awesome resource that we've seen. When we can collaborate, uh, we can make great strides, uh, but it's hard with the diversity that we have. Um, but that's, that's something to think about. Uh, maybe if we chose uh, some reference boards and tried to focus uh, our efforts in on a few targets we might we might get some stuff out of it yeah using a reference an old reference board for measuring things like system size might make it easier for us <laughs> <laughs> okay the observation is using an old reference board for measuring system size might make you depressed yeah, did you know that did, did, did you know that uh, that uh, Linux version 0 0.11 ran in 2 meg <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, just a comment. Um, it'd be great if we could do something to raise our profile so that it's not just developers who are people, because also the managers are those developers. It seems to me that a lack of understanding of how all this sort of work is a big block from the developers being able to push stuff. Okay. Okay. And the manufacturers don't want people to do that. OK. Uh, I've got to stop, but I'll repeat your question. Uh, or your statement, and that is that uh, we should expand our focus beyond just developers. Uh, we should look at management, uh, and I would say end users. If there's a way to get end users involved in things like testing, um, my dream is that someone could take Fuego, which is my project, and, uh, and run it on a product that they received, on a Sony TV, and, and send reports to Sony. That would be awesome. Uh, so, you know, expanding to an even in bigger ecosystem of, of pro users of our product as well. Okay, I've, I apologize, we don't have more time. I, I'm going to uh, get with Geert, who I asked to uh, take notes, and we'll look at some of these notes and we'll uh, try to come up with, uh, 
I'll probably see if I can send out a survey. I'm not sure where to send it to, <laughs> given that we don't have a mailing list. But uh, may, I can, I, probably to the attendee list or something. But anyway, thank you very much for, for coming and your time. Thank you.